and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Dart Zone Apex and why I like this blaster so much. Without me rambling on anymore, let's just go ahead and get right into the video. There is a camel spider on my wall. Okay, I picked up this Dart Zone revolver at my local Dollar General. It's from their Ballistic Ops line. And I've already done some modifications to it. But unfortunately, those modifications are causing it to want to explode. So I'm going to take this apart and reinforce it and show you exactly what those are. One thing I have already done is remove the air restrictor. And I've increased the seal between the revolver and this. And I put a stock deploy spring over the stock spring in this. K26, I couldn't get it to compress without shortening to the point that there was slop and it was just useless. But with this spring in it, it hits considerably higher. Uh, I didn't do that though because I wanted a hard hitting single shot. I did it because I can now shotgun two of them and get a 45 foot range pretty easily with an okay spread. And if you turn it sideways, you get a more interesting effect and spread. But let's go ahead and crack this open. So one of the first things I've done is I have removed the trigger safety, which left a decent hole. So I filled that with a piece of plastic that is pretty similar in color. And whenever you put the two together, it's not perfect for sure. But actually, I'm probably not going to get this back together. But it does match up on both sides, and it fills in that gap. And where I got the plastic from was off the end of a Dart Zone Magnum. It's stock, the swivel stock. Every time I have the older Dart Zone Magnum and it has that swivel stock, I remove it. It's very simple. You just remove the grips, take it off, put the grips back on. You don't even have to take the whole blaster apart. And always remove those, so I just have a lot of that sitting around. So it's essentially extra plastic that I can use to fill things like this. And here is the deploy spring, stock deploy spring, over the stock spring. Whoa, catch. Whoa. This thing just wants to explode out of here. Whew. Yeah. But, as you can see, it's bowing out the shell here. I need to reinforce that. This is super flimsy. I also feel like I need to reinforce the back of this with something as well. Uh, I just don't want this to explode. The other thing I need to do is permanently glue this plastic piece on here uh, before I reassemble it and fill it in as much as I can because that's part of what is causing this to want to explode. And I also need to fill some of the dead space in here on both sides. I'm probably actually going to use the dreaded epoxy that I don't like to use. But yeah, it's just really warping the shell. So something to keep in mind if you want to do a spring upgrade. Okay. So as you can see there, both springs, including the deploy and the stock spring, have pre-compression going on uh, whenever you have it in place. And that's part of what makes it hard to put it together and take apart. And as thin and flimsy as this shell is, it's going to break or just not work properly in time. So this corner here and this corner here need to be reinforced. And it is pretty much just dead space, so I'm not super worried about doing that. Okay, so I went ahead and glued on this front piece here, and I just used crazy glue or super glue. And then in the gaps, both on the top and the bottom, I filled that in with some super glue and baking soda and just made it level so I won't have to sand or really do anything. It's a little messy right there. I probably will sand that, but that is now much more solid than than this is which I can just totally squeeze this and it flexes I squeeze this now and there's no flex so I suppose maybe I should glue this one on as well get to that in a second but next I'm going to start mixing and pouring in my two-part epoxy just to help add some rigidity to all this
Okay, I filled it up as much as I could. I used some black JB Weld plastic bond. It's actually a polyurethane and it smells completely different than the normal liquid epoxy, but I used that too. Filled in these spaces. Filled in the grip so it's more solid. This area and here with several layers of each type of epoxy to make it as sturdy as possible. Same here and in here. Now as far as some of the specifics on the things that I changed on this, before I put a secondary spring in it, I took out the air restrictor. However, whenever I did that, it created a significant amount of dead space. So with the stock spring in it, I started getting 10 to 15 FPS per shot pretty consistently. Uh, even with the half a millimeter thick, or no, sorry, one millimeter thick uh, EVA foam black gasket I handmade and glued on here. So to solve the dead space problem, I had to take this half moon, as you can see maybe it's the gray thing above the orange, and I had to glue that in place using a pair of needle nose pliers and super glue. And it was pretty tricky, but I did get it in there. But there was still a lot of dead space. So on the actual plunger head, I pressed into this as hard as I could after I glued on this EVA foam gasket and it gave me an idea of where the rest of the dead space was so I took this half inch thick piece of mat and cut it to just go into that hole so that whenever you fire it it goes all the way up to the end and that actually gave me a 5 to 10 FPS increase with the stock spring and then it was pretty much perfect once I added this. Interestingly enough, this does make the seal very tight. The extra springs do push this very snug against the actual cylinder. But one of the problems I had is if I primed too fast, this would over rotate. And I'd skip a barrel and I'd end up firing four and then have a dry fire and I'd look at it and there'd be one random ball stuck in there somewhere. Once I increase the seal, it still operates smoothly, but I haven't had an over-rotation problem yet. Of course, I could also be due to the fact that this is much harder to prime and much slower. But that's pretty much it as far as modifications. So I'm going to go ahead and put this sucker back together.
Okay, that was five shots over the chronograph with dart zone rounds. I feel like I kind of clipped one of them as I shot it through the chronograph, but 147, 134, one, well, sorry, 147.5, 134.5, 147.6, 103.8, and 122.6. The 103.8 is the one that I feel like kind of bounced off the rim as it went in, and I only say that because I haven't actually had this chrono below 120 FPS once I put that secondary spring in it. And all this information is great, but can I hit something? And will it shotgun at 40 feet? And the answer is yes it will, but let's get some of that fun stuff on film. Okay, I'm gonna start off with five dart zone rounds, and I am aiming for the center square, the white square. That was a misfire. Let's see if we can do better. All right, now I'm gonna do five rounds of genuine Nerf high impact rounds. It does seem to like those a little better. That was almost a direct hit. And for the two shot bursts, I'm going to be using only the nerf ammo, just because for whatever reason it doesn't work the greatest with the dart zone. Okay, and at that range, uh, and with that spread, a total of six of the rounds did not make it inside of the catcher. So that means only four out of the ten rounds fired over those five shots made it into the dart catcher. And if that gives you any idea of the spread, now I'm going to remove this and just shoot at the flat wall so you can see that. And then I'm going to do one sideways, which I kind of feel like almost works better. One thing I will say is if you've used, I believe it's called the Atlas, the rival two-shot shotgun that, you know, shoots six shots of two each, it has next to no spread. And they do hit pretty much where you're aiming at this range, whereas with this thing you actually get a decent spread moving, I mean whether you're using it sideways or straight, I feel like the hop up is kind of negated. However in this, it's more like you're lobbing balls, but that's once again more of a shotgun like effect. Okay, well apparently I spoke too soon on the lack of misfires. If you saw from the firing footage, uh, I had several misfires, including when I went through all the trouble of throwing on my chest loadout and my Boba Fett mask, unfortunately. But yeah, I did paint these black, and I also painted this and then masked off the grip and painted the grip black, mostly just for the fact that like, I don't know, it's just how rival blasters kind of always look. And I did use Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Gloss Black. So to this real quick, I have a spot here for this exact strike, which actually fires two darts at once. It doesn't just fire a, one dart at a time anymore. I also put a different grip on it. And the 
back in here. And I also made a spot on the rear of it for my Busby two shot double fire. All I did was saw down the barrel and remove the air restrictors. So those are gone. It's a little bit louder, but it does shoot around 80 to 88 FPS. And I guess what I'm trying to say is A, I like shotguns. B, uh, I already made space on my loadout for two. Okay, and these two only fire two shots and I have to reload them. So the fact that this came out, first thing I thought of was how cool it would be to have five two shots in a shotgun type blaster and that's what this is now. So since I've done all that, I feel like I now need to make a holster for it. Okay, so this is what I came up with so far. It's kind of bulky, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, so what I did was I just took some five millimeter EVA foam. Uh, I would have used one whole piece if I had one whole piece. As it is, all I have was scraps, so I had to piece the scraps together. However, I took a piece of two millimeter, or no, sorry, three millimeter EVA foam, and I glued that over top of it. That's one full flush piece. I didn't want any sort of bumps on the inside as I'm trying to put it in the holster or take it out of the holster. So for the outside, what I have is the three millimeter and all I did was glue it on one side place the blaster on it with the shape that I traced and cut into the piece folded it over drew a line with the sharpie and then just cut it and then glued it there and to glue all this stuff together I use DAP weld wood contact cement it provides a flexible bond however this is not going to be durable this is way too thin so I'm going to start layering stuff on this I have some two millimeter foam here that I took an X-Acto knife and just scored some lines into for effect. And I'm gonna put a piece of that there. And I'm gonna put another piece of just plain uh, foam over this without any of the cuts in it like this has. So, I get contact cement in a much larger thing so that I can do larger cosplay projects. And I'll just use a sponge brush to apply it. And, if you haven't ever used stuff like this before, you need to do it in a well-ventilated area. And you also need to let it set for 15 to 20 minutes and after you apply this to each thing that you're trying to glue. And if you're not sure if it's been long enough, if you touch it and it's wet or very sticky, it is not ready to be bonded, which I know sounds like totally backwards of how you would think it would work. Like since it's glue, you'd want it to be sticky, but you actually don't. You want it to be dry. Once it's dry on each surface and you stick it together, it will not come apart. So you have to make sure that you have the pieces lined up the way you want and everything situated the way that you want. Otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. And already marked on here where to stop with the contact cement. I'm just going to follow my line straight across, put on a thick amount, I try to put it as evenly as possible. The foam is very porous, so it will absorb it. Okay, let that set for 15 minutes and then I'll come back and stick all this stuff together. Okay, before I put the two pieces together, oops, I'm gonna put the blaster in there so that it has the shape of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue my pieces on. Okay, it's finished. I glue the piece onto the bottom 
I had a couple of these pieces that I already had the cuts in left over. So I just put them on there just to look cool. And I did wrap leather, my contact cemented leather, around this top edge here. Just to make it more durable. Like here and down here is where it's going to take the most stress and abuse. So on the bottom I put a half inch thick piece of EVA foam mat. I didn't even mess around. And then on the back I made these raised pieces here by putting some 3 millimeter on the ends of the 5 because the back of this has a curve to it and if I just glued the belt loops onto it it would probably put a lot of stress and strain on the holster pulling it this way. Uh, the belt's going to go through here and it'll be on my left hip and you'll notice these are at an angle so that it's not just sitting you know straight on my hip it has a slight upward angle so whenever I reach across and grab it I can have a better angle than just having it straight I can pull it straight out and fire well if it's primed but yeah go ahead and throw this on and see how that looks Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas for your projects and loadouts for your Nerf Wars or Dartsoft or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I really do like this blaster and like I say for $10 and minimum modification, a very fun, very enjoyable five shot shotgun pistol and pretty decent size for what you can get out of it for a little bit of money. So, as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Have a great day.